Hey guys, Jason. And today I want to talk about something that a lot of people would say is not very interesting, but it's very important. So it's one of those where it's more technically based, but it has a very direct effect on the average Bitcoin user. So if you know there's been a lot of you know talk about forking Bitcoin so that we can have larger than one megabyte block sizes, and there's been discussion you know by everybody really. Everybody's kind of had wanted to put their say in on you know, how big the block size should be, and you know really do we really need that, and you know how many transactions. For instance, if if you don't know, there's a lot of transactions that aren't getting in because of fees not being allocated right. You know people don't want to put a high enough fee for it to get accepted by the mining pools or by an individual solo miner. And then you also have the fact that a lot of people are saying, well, we're getting pretty close. You know, we've got sometimes one of the pools got to the point where they were at almost near one megabyte um, usage of a block, which is its complete usability. I mean, completely full uh, data side because one megabyte is the max you can go. And so there's been a lot of discussion here recently about switching, you know, and doing this would require a hard fork. And as you know, normally hard forks, you know, you really want, if you're going to do it, you want, you know, 95, 99% of the population or the, those involved, the developers and everybody in Bitcoin to say, yes, we should do that. And that way you're not worried about kind of civil war inside Bitcoin because Bitcoin is peer to peer. And so it becomes very much of a, you know, how many nodes do you have and how many miners and pools do you have? And we talk about, you know, the, the problems that having a peer to peer based system, you know, because we talk about this, the good things of it, but sometimes there's negatives of it, like when you know pools have over 51% or they even get 20%. And I did a whole video about that, and you could go find it on my channel. But here's what I want to talk about. I, I do this video about every 11, 10 months, more so because I think it's interesting. It kind of keeps the news relevant, and it is really relevant with all this blockchain um, information and the size limit. But we're now up to 38 gigabytes of blockchain data. And that's incredible. I mean, I remember back in the day when it was nothing. You know, for me, I started into Bitcoin when I was about 14 years old. I was the youngest person in Bitcoin at the time. And, you know, I didn't really get very active in the community. I read a lot, but I never really, you know, got, to, I, I talked to people, but I never really posted on the forums and stuff. I never really made an account. I think I was like 16, 17. Just never felt like I had the need to. Um, and so it's really interesting to me. I mean, this 38 gigabytes to me seems like crazy. And if you're someone like me that is really, really, you know, does a lot of data stuff on your computer, I have a RAID set up on one of my, um, it used to be my miner, and then I built a um, case for it, or got a case and put some nice stuff in it. And now its usability is an editing station for my YouTube videos and all my research and everything. And 38 gigabytes takes up a lot of space. And I, I know what you're going to say. You say, well, Jason, you did a video about a year ago. We talked about how the, you know, Bitcoin dash QT, which is the default wallet, is not really the big one anymore. You know, there's other ones where it only uses, you know, a certain, it only downloads a certain portion of the blockchain. And then it uses the rest. It references the rest on an online client, which is perfectly fine. Except for the problem that everyone I talk to is still very much engaged in I don't, want, I don't know what the word is to use. Just very much um, idolized on the using the Bitcoin QT wallet, uh, QT wallet. And I'm the same way. I love using the Bitcoin QT wallet. So I can see that um, differential. People say, well, yeah, that is nice. And it has, you know, it's basically a light version of the Bitcoin QT wallet. But they say, eh, I just like to use the, you know, the original one that's been modified and developed the most. And I get that. And that's why, you know, we talk about the 38 gigabytes. You might say, well, Okay, but 38 gigabytes, what's that have to do with the whole, you know, potential civil war with Bitcoin and all this blockchain information? Well, I'll tell you. Right now, you know, we don't normally, every block does not, you know, max out at one megabyte. That's a, kind of a misconception. A lot of them are, you know, 500 kilobytes, and some of them aren't even that high. It depends on the time of day, you know, time of week and the time of month, really, and just the transaction, you know, log that's backlogged and how many transactions are going through at that time period. But one of the big key points are, say we move it from one megabyte blockchain limit to 10 megabytes per block. Well, suddenly that you know, quadruples, or not even quadruples in some cases, that's, that's for another idea, you know, tenfold how big a size it could be. So working at the potential of the Bitcoin, Bitcoin QT wallet in the next five years, you know, I predict this before, but it could be 100 gigabytes. It could be 250 gigabytes. And suddenly you run into, you know, people on laptops only have 
100 or 200 gig hard drive because they bought a cheaper version and it really would be interesting how are they going to you know are they going to try to really push people using the lighter versions you know the non official I mean they're official clients but they're they're not produced by the official developers of bitcoin and I know what you'll say there's no official developers because bitcoin is a peer to peer system and everybody kind of works on these open source programs on their you know together that's true but the bitcoin qt wall has really had the namesake it's kind of like Kleenex. Kleenex has the brand, the brand name. Everyone's gonna, most people buy Kleenex, even though you can buy cheaper tissues for a lower price, it just has the namesake. It's the same way that cryptocurrencies are that way. You know, Bitcoin's the Kleenex version, and then all the other cryptocurrencies are like the off-brand. And I know people that love the cryptocurrencies are gonna get mad at me, but hey, I'm, you know, I'm investing in Litecoin and foreign coin and all these other ones, and I understand, you know, you can't, it's just the way it is. So I know this is turning into a long video, and you say, Jason, is a data set really that big a deal? That's why I get people to email me all on this all the time. I said, well, it's going to be a big deal because there's a lot of discussion whether we should do, you know, the hard fork, whether we should increase the block, you know, size limit per um, block, which is every, it's supposed to be theoretically every 10 minutes, but it varies because of, you know, the hash rate and everything. That's just how it works. But yeah, 38 gigabytes. It, it, I remember when I did videos and I was like, man, guys, it's, you know, 10 mega or not 10 megabytes, 10 gigabytes. What are we going to do? Like how big is it ever going to get? And now to see a 38 is a pretty big deal. I and mean, it's not that huge, it, it's reasonable, but it's starting to take up larger and larger portions of hard drives and when a majority of Bitcoin users still enjoy the Bitcoin QT wallet, we don't know where that's going to go. So thanks guys for watching news on here. I appreciate that you guys watch my channel and want to keep up to date with all the Bitcoin information going on. I know this is more of a drier subject, the, you know, the size of the blockchain, but the blockchain is the fundamental you know, setting ground and the foundation of what Bitcoin is. And many people argue that the blockchain is the most you know, revolutionary thing, you know, second, or not second, but you know, first to the idea of a you know, digital worldwide currency. So I, I think it's kind of important you know, to discuss. Anyway, have a great afternoon. Thanks for watching.